complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1984. She was employed for by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008. A self-taught day trader with over 10 years experience, Melissa especially is a trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Uh, watch Melissa on RT uh, America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. Uh, okay, Melissa, I see here uh, stock swoosh, make fast profits, trading 30 minutes a day, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, and you have the floor. Thank you so much, John. It's so nice to be here. Welcome, everyone. Again, it is a beautiful sunny day here in New York. Last week, we kind of had a crazy week here in Manhattan because we had a lot of the smoke from the Canadian wildfire, so it's I live in a very, very interesting place, and I do have my hand on the pulse of what's happening with the market, not just talking on TV about what's happening with economic data, but also trading live every single day. So today we actually went long, even though I do prefer to short, today we went long NVIDIA, and we had a nice trade to the upside in NVIDIA today. The market is waiting anxiously for what the Fed is going to do tomorrow. So I expect tomorrow to be a volatile day and a great day to trade, actually. So we're going to talk about making fast profits. Why? Because I think in any type of market, but particularly this market in 2023, getting in and out quickly and making money as fast as you can allows you to be less stressed and not have to worry about the wiggles and jiggles and the ups and downs of what's happening with the economy, with the market, with reports that come out. Because obviously, even like a day like today, we had information come out. The reason the market was up is because we had a CPI number that really was bad, in my opinion, but not as bad as it could have been. So we kind of live in a, in a topsy-turvy world right now where good data is bad news and and bad data is good news, and so it'll be an interesting 24 to 48 hours to really see if the Fed ends up raising rates. But for me, what I do is I like to day trade. I day trade stocks. I also trade options. We will talk about both of those today. Again, you can do fast trades in day trades, and you can do fast trades in options. If you have would like more information or would like to talk to me on the phone, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. And as John said, I appear on every single channel. I talk about the economy. I talk about the market, where I think the market's going. And again, so far, we're halfway through the year. It's hard to believe. We're halfway through 2023. In two weeks, it's going to be July 4th. It's June. This year has flown by. And the market is trying to make a comeback this year. We'll see if it ends up doing it. But I get this question a lot where people always ask me, can you make a living as a professional trader? And the answer is yes, you can make a living as a professional trader, but a lot of people struggle with that. They struggle with that because they're just not focused. So one of the reasons I'm successful is I'm just pinpointing one thing a day. Like I said, today we went long NVIDIA. Yesterday we shorted Target. I'm looking for the quick trades in and out just in a couple of minutes, just in a half an hour. Again, it's the focus. And I think a lot of day traders, uh, retail traders too, actually don't have enough of a laser sharp focus. And again, in a choppy market, you really can get beat up. But as I was saying earlier, as far as making a living trading, I think there's a lot of reasons why people may want to trade the market. One of it is the quality of life. So I, I lived in New York for over 10 years. I recently moved. And one of the things that I, when I decided that I wanted to become a trader was I wanted a better quality of life. Quality of life is very, very important. That has to do with not just how much money you make, it has to do with actually how much free time you have outside of your current career. Because if you're working 70, 80 hours a week, you're, you don't have a lot of free time. If you're even working 50 hours a week, that's a lot. So I think a lot of people are working harder and making less. And while people have gotten bumps up in their salary with the last few years with inflation, it still hasn't covered the cost of inflation prices and people are working a lot harder. 
So some people want to trade the stock market for a living to make more money. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to work from home. It's a nice that I, I can work from home. I'm talking to you today from my office in my home in New York. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to be their own boss, obviously, independence, not having to report to someone, making your own hours. All of those things are really advantageous about trading. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to have an unlimited income potential. Why? Because the better you are, the more skilled you are, the more you risk, the more you can make. Okay, so there's really an unlimited potential for earnings in the market if you know what you're doing, if you can do something well. Whatever strategy that is you want to focus on, again, whether it's day trades, options, going long, shorting, whatever you want to do. Some people want to trade the stock market for a living to work less hours than a normal job will require. Again, as I said, I trade in the morning the first half an hour of the day. The market's open from 9.30 to 4, even if you wanted to sit and trade for six and a half hours a day, which I don't. But even if you did, that's still not a normal 40-hour work week, okay? A lot less hours. And while all of these things are good reasons to want to trade this stock market for a living, what it really boils down to, in my opinion, is having a better quality of life. And if you can learn to successfully trade the stock market for a living, you can have a better quality of life. And this will help you. It will help you actually, um, you know, as far as your stress level. You can also have all the things that I just mentioned above and more. And sure, if you're successful, you can get rich, okay? But some people have small accounts. They can make money with small accounts. They're never going to get rich trading because the size of their accounts doesn't allow them to risk a lot of money. But they can still do this and pay their bills and have a better quality of life. So some of it is about making a lot of money, okay, or getting rich or wealthy. But it's not just all of that. More money really means you have more time and more freedom in your life, okay? Which again, goes back to the quality of life. And that again, will help you with something else called longevity, where you can live a very long life and a happy life. It's the quality of life that's so important. And the older you get, the more important the quality of your life really becomes. What do I mean? You realize there are things in life you don't wanna waste time doing anymore. You realize there are people in your life you don't wanna spend time with anymore, okay? You realize that certain things aren't worth stressing out over, okay? And you want to make a lot of money, sure. I do, you do, everybody that trades does. But you also realize how much time it takes you to earn that money is significant too. So if someone said you could earn $1,000 in two minutes or $1,000 in a day or two days, which would you choose? Obviously, the shorter time, faster time. And that's one of the reasons why I like fast trades. If I trade fast and earn money fast trading, then I have more freedom and time to do what I want. Whether that's walking in the park, watching the turtles, or anything else I want to do. I live across from Central Park. It's absolutely beautiful. That picture I just showed you, I took that picture. It doesn't even look real. I took it with my own phone camera. So, you know, quality of life is just so important. And I think people are so focused when they're trading on money, making a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of money, piggy targets, they kind of lose sight of what they should be for, focused on, which is getting good at trading, so that over time, you can, you can actually make more money, do this as a career, if in fact this is what you want to do, or have extra money to improve the quality of your life so you don't have to work so hard at your full-time job. But anyways, get to the point of this is the whole, whole idea, the whole point of trading is, it's a short-term sacrifice for the long-term benefit of getting to the point where you're making money in the market. So that short-term sacrifice may be taking a class. On a weekend, it may be paying for a class. It may be learning something new. It's a short-term sacrifice for the long-term gain of having a better quality of life. And the sooner you make it, the better, because the sooner your life will improve. And I think a lot of traders miss the boat with this, and they're just not fully invested in trying to really get good at what they're doing. They're so focused on the money that if they don't make a lot of money right away with something the first day, the first week, or whatever the case may be, then they just tend to go hog wild and end up kind of getting into trading where they're gambling, okay? Which, as you well know, is dangerous, and then people never become successful when they're doing that. 
Now, this was the month of May's room results. We made a lot of money in the month of May. We're on target here for June to do very well as well. This is an average risk per trade. These are day trades. This is not the options. These are equity trades on margin. Average risk of $2,800 per trade, $59,912. So, so far this year, most of these trades are short. Some were longs. But we have had a great, a great year so far, day trading. Again, it's honing it down. You know, and in a market like this, like I said, yesterday the market rallied, we shorted. We shorted target. We shorted target and the market rallied. So you can make money shorting even if the market's rallying or vice versa. Actually, here was the trade yesterday, so this was target. So let's go over what we did here yesterday. Again, I like the fast trades. What do I focus on? I focus on gaps. Let's take a look at it. This is, I'm going to go back to last week. Okay, this is the beginning of June here. Target closed here, gap down. Target closed here, gap down. What is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So on this day here, target closed at one price at 4 o'clock Eastern time when the U.S. stock market closes at around 131 and change. Boom, open in the morning here under 130 and fell. We actually did this Friday here and we also did this Monday yesterday. So target was a short. We also did puts in target, okay? I called the 129 puts and the 125 puts in target, and, and they worked nicely. So we did day trades and we did puts. Now you say, what's the difference? Anything that I do is based on my Golden Gap 26-point rating method. That's what I teach in my class once a month. So whether you decide to do an option in something or you decide to do a day trade, it really has to do with the type of account you have how much you want to spend per trade, and again, whether or not you have an account where it's a margin account that you can do day, tra day trades, like the Target, or if you don't, if you have a cash account, or perhaps a retirement account where you can only do options, you would just do the puts, okay? I do both. I People always ask me these questions. I do both, okay? I like options, and I like day trades. There's advantages to doing both, and Target was a good example of that. But this was the day trade that we did yesterday on Monday in Target. And again, this was a short. So we're playing momentum. I'm always looking for momentum. Again, we got in and out fast. I could have held this longer. This went all the way down to 125. Anyways, we entered this here, 126.50. 3,500 shares risk was 31.50. Exit 125.55, boom. Profit was 3,325. Now, when I'm looking to take a trade, I'm usually looking for to turn it over one time, okay? Take it, get in, get out. So if I take something, I'm looking to get in with one amount and get out at the amount that I risk. So if I risk 1,000, I'm looking to make 1,000. If I risk 2,000, I'm looking to make 2,000. I think that's a good um, amount to look one risk per trade. And again, I'm not sure if I can see people's questions in here. I see the chat with hosts and panelists. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions or, or if, um, if, if maybe Kate can pop that up. But anyways, going back here to the target, okay? This was the target yesterday, the one minute on the target, okay? So again, for the fast trades, I want to get in and out very, very quickly, okay? So I am trading on the one minute. I'm getting in on the one minute and I'm getting out of the one minute. So here was the here was the target. Again, this was the day before. Came down, fell, boom. We shorted it, got in, got out. Oops. And got the drop. Okay? So again, momentum is I'm risking a dollar, I'm looking to make a dollar. And again, this could be to the upside, could be to the downside. In the case here of target, we shorted it. Okay? And again, this was Monday, June 12th. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, how do you make the success happen? Why do people find trading success so elusive? What are they doing? Again, in today's markets, you just can't short everything and you can't go long everything. And right now, people are going long everything. Why? The market's rallied the last few days, the last few weeks, actually. And that's just not the case. And again, we're going into tomorrow. We'll have to see how the market reacts tomorrow. The market could react bullish if the Fed raises rates. The market could react bearish if the Fed raises rates or even doesn't raise rates. You can't predict what's going to happen with that. Everything I do, I look at technical analysis. I'm looking at advanced technical analysis in the gap, okay? Every day I'm looking at the gap day to day. Then I have a method I advise to rate it. That's how I knew Target would fall. That's how I knew NVIDIA would rally, okay? If I got a good gap, I take it, I play it in the direction of the gap. 
But in this type of market, again, you have to take it day by day. And the one thing I know is the gap trading is so, so powerful because you get momentum, you get moves. And a lot of people that look to trade gaps and understand how to trade gaps, they do gaps incorrectly. And the nice thing is, I mean, gaps are just so, so powerful. And we're gonna look at some of those trades here today. But having a strategy to focus on no matter what you wanna do is very important. You can't have any distractions. So every day I get up, I'm just looking for that bullseye. And the faster I can get in and the faster I can get out, the better it is the better it is for me. So let's get to talking a little bit more about my strategy on gaps. So what is a gap? A gap is something that happens every day in the market in stocks or ETFs. I will trade ETFs like the QQQs or the SPY. So what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. So what is a golden gap? This is what I coined my own personal rating system. It's a gap that's made with institutional money that moves something up in a big way or moves something down in a big way. Again, Target's a good example of that with momentum. Institutional money is when hedge funds come in or buy a stock or sell a stock. Big, big money, professional traders, volume, okay? What does it look like? It looks like power. Again, how, you can't move a stock yourself. You need that power coming from the institutions in order to push it down or push it up, okay? And again, that's how you're going to get the big moves. Here was another one that we did. This was mu. We shorted it. Again, great example here of momentum, mu gap down. This was a couple of days ago. Mu closed here, gap down, fell, boom. We shorted it, got the drop. What is happening here in the mu? It's falling. The momentum was to the downside, Okay, so would you want to be short the mu here? And again, we got in, got out. Got in, got out. Again, trade the morning, be done. Make the money that you can in the morning. That's my best advice to you because, again, the longer you wait throughout the day, things get choppier and choppier and choppier and choppier. Here's another day we did. We did the QQQs. Again, the Qs are the ETF. We shorted it. Again, here's momentum to the downside. To the downside, okay? So again, this fell. So when you're looking to do something, you want to get the momentum correctly. That's the only way you're going to make money. If you're against the direction in something, you're going to lose. So institutional money is always in charge. Even if you think it's not, it is. And I think this is one of the things that people have found difficult since the beginning of the year in January in this type of market. People are think the market's lower, then it fakes lower, then it fakes higher, then it fakes lower, then it fakes higher. People have really bought into the fact that they think the market's higher now. Is that the case? I mean, are you sure in that? Would you bet your life on it? So again, institutional money is always in charge. Don't make trading hard. If you trade with the power instead of against the power, you're going to have a lot easier time making money. Okay. And again, the faster you can get in and out, the better off you're going to be. So I devise a method to spot institutional money and then trade with it, which is what I look for in the gap. It's made my life a lot easier. Again, it's a lot less stressful to be in and out fast. You have a better quality of life if you're not working all day. And also, the amount of money that you make has to do with the risk that you put on. How many shares can you take or how many contracts can you take and how accurate can you be in that? If you want to hold something longer, say for an option or whatever, you could get out of half the trade, hold it for the other half of the position, okay? But I'm capturing these moves on a small time frame, and that's what I'm looking to do every single solitary day. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. You want to be in the side of power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. And, and I preface that because of where we're going into in the second half here of 2023. Um, do I scan Do I scan the stocks for, for gaps? Gaps is G-A-P-S, I think you meant gaps, instead of gaps, Walter. Um, you can, yes, I scan for gaps, if that's what your question is. Yes, that's how I find them. You can scan for them on a scanner. 
Becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis is required. Like, because you, if you're, if you, again, if you're relying on economic data to make decisions, you're getting killed. Because the way I would read the data is that inflation, first of all, the Fed admitted that it's not transitory. Second of all, they're still making crazy targets and we're going to get down to a certain percentage by the end of the year, which there's no, there's no way that's going to happen now, even if they continue to raise rates. And third, okay, much of this data isn't good, okay? And then the market reacts differently. So again, if you're looking at the fundamentals, you're saying, wow, we could be going into recession. And yet, if you're looking at the technicals, the market's been rallying. So, you, you, you know, if you want to combine technicals with fundamentals, that's fine. But when the fundamentals don't match up with the technicals, you got to go with the technicals, okay? That's how you have to make decisions, and that's what I do in reading the charts. It's reading the price action in the charts. So I've been trading since 2008, okay? So, you know, 15 years I've been doing this, and I've become an expert in reading basically the pre-market data and the post-market data in, in a gap mostly in the market. That's what's allowed me to get on actually national television because I've made a lot of calls about the market and stocks on TV on, in live time. But the reality is that that level of focus that I've had on reading that data in the gap has gotten better over time because I've stayed with the same thing for the last 15 years. One of the things I think the mistakes that I think people make is like I said, they have unrealistic expectations about making a certain amount of trading really, really quickly. Part of that could be their own assumptions that you can get rich trading the market. Yes, you can, but not without a skill set, not without money behind you, not without learning how to do. You're not going to get rich by taking somebody else's trades and not knowing what to do. You're just not. Okay, that's that's like, again, going back to the gambling philosophy. If you put a plan of action in place, you can be successful. You want to do this for a long time and get good at it like I've done. You can be successful. And what is that amount of long time? I don't know. You come take my class and learn from me in a weekend what I know. Will you learn everything like that? Maybe you will. Or maybe it will take you time. Maybe you'll have a learning curve. Whatever it'll be, it'll be shorter than my learning curve was to initially create my own system, which is why you come and pay me for the information and the class and my mentoring. But I think a lot of people just want to jump around from too many things and they never get good at one strategy. They never get good at one thing. And that is a mistake because, again, in this type of market, you shouldn't trade alone and you shouldn't trade if you don't know what to do because you're going to lose. You're going to lose. So as difficult as a time as people have had the first part of I'm talking about retail traders have had for the first half of 2023, they may have even even more difficult time in the second half of 2023. You are not going to change what the Fed does. You can't control that. You don't even know ahead of time. You can guess you can make assumptions, you know, but you don't know for sure. If I was a, a betting person, a betting woman, I'd say the Fed is going to raise rates tomorrow. The market isn't accounting for that right now. The last two days, all they've been discussing on TV, I haven't been on TV the last two days, but all they've been discussing is the fact that the Fed's going to pause. I wouldn't bet my life on that, okay? But the, but the market's rallying that the Fed is going to pause. Comprehending how to redefine and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader elevate yourself your trading and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading the market the other thing is too when you look at the market right now and i'm just talking about the last few weeks with the rally really low volume some of the lowest volume i have ever seen in the market etfs and stocks have you looked at goldman sachs lately a powerhouse that i've traded and traded and traded and traded and traded for years haven't touched it with a 10-foot pole in months. It's It has no volume. Like, I mean, when you look at what's going on in some of these some of these stocks, if you've traded for a long time, you see there's no volume. So then how can you buy into this rally? At least if we're going to go up to the highs right now. I don't. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm keeping an open mind. But don't forget, money controls the world. Money controls the world. Institutional money controls the world. Look what happened with banks a few months ago. 
If you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to train with this side of power. You have to be focused on it and you need to know how to find it. It's very important to find it because the power has the ability to pay you. The market has the ability to pay you. Knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trainer and you can win big trading on this side of power. And again, it's the idea of the fast move. That fast, quick move is so helpful because then you can get out before the economic data happens, before the wiggles and jiggles happen, and then you can book the profits. Again, trading is not about holding and long-term investing. Active J trading for options, for day trades, all of it has to do with getting in and out, in and out. Again, it's the idea of booking money, okay? So for me, it's one strategy and one focus and that is what i have done ever since i decided that gaps have so much power for me the power that happens in a gap and again i like to focus on shorts but i will go long but the power that happens in a gap makes it so that you can take a small size or a big size where you're getting the very very large move otherwise you're scalping okay and scalping you know you can lose then a lot of money if you're scalping and only make a little bit momentum is the way to go and again when i'm doing options i'm buying an option where i'm buying the call and selling it or i'm buying a put and selling it i'm trading options based on momentum momentum in the gap so again we did ba this was a short this was a put a put is a short and again if you want to trade options you do not have to worry about what the price is of margin and something like ba when we did this here this was the 195 strike i called this on thursday may 4th the cost of the option was 225 which is really cheap considering the cost of BA is 195 per share. Again, you must have a margin account to short this, or you buy the put here, which was 225 An advanced trader risk of 40 contracts, 9,000 risk. You could have sold it at 470 and flipped it around more than 100%. This is a good trade. I'm going to show you the chart in a minute. If you took less risk, five contracts, risk 1125 sold at 470 profit 1225 Return on investment, 109. So let's take a look at the BA. So again, here it was. Hold on, that was the fourth, yeah. Here. So again, this was a gap down. Stock close here, gap down, boom. We hit it. We hit it early. Sent the letter out for the put, boom, fell. And again, where was this at? Around 200, fell. Again, so an option, you get in, get out. Fast, make it, get in, get out, boom, done went through the strike see it so that was a gap down it was a put so it was a short okay that was may 4th in the ba and we call this pretty early it's 12 minutes after the open okay now let's look at another one we did here paypal this was again another put may 9th cheap one here for this too 225 had a huge move could have sold it for 650. You could take one contract. You could have bought one contract for $225 and you still could have more than doubled your money. So let's look at the PayPal. Where did this go? May 9th. Here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. Again, PayPal was here the night before, roughly around 75 and change. Boom, open here in the morning, right under, snug as a bug, under 70 and fell. Mm -mm -mm. And this is one you could have got in, got out. You could have got in, got out. You could have even held this all the way down. I mean, again, I'm not telling people that they should hold options to the expiration date at all. If the options are up money, you need to book it. But this is one that was a bleeder. It kept falling and falling and falling and falling. Again, I'm trading options with momentum, momentum. And again, it's the whole idea of the power of money because you're not pushing that stock down. You're just taking the trade and you're writing it down or you're writing it up. Again, depending on if you're going long or not. So again, someone was asking earlier, how do you find gaps? There's a ton of ways to find gaps. You can watch CNBC in the morning and, find, and talk about stocks that they have earnings and find gaps. There's gaps on news. There's gaps on earnings. There's gaps with sec the sectors. There's gaps with the market, okay? You can buy a scanner. You can pay for a scanner. You can find them anywhere. It's not hard to find stocks that are gapping. And the market gaps almost every single day. The criteria to find which gap is the best gap and which gap will follow through in the direction of the gap that's going to have a big move. That's where you have to learn how to do it. And that's what I teach in my class. So it is a rating system that I teach that 
helps me qualify. And again, all I do this in the pre-market. I do this all in the morning. Before I even take a trade, I know what I'm doing or if I'm doing nothing at all. It's a checklist. This is what you come and learn from me if you wanted to do it. I've been doing this for 13 years. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. Boom. And I never skip it. And I never fudge it. And I never not rate anything I do. And I don't trade on the fly. Trading on the fly is dangerous, okay? Trading on the fly is deadly because and ultimately you're going to make an incorrect decision. It's like deciding to just go hog wild in a trade and risking too much money in something because you have a feeling about it or whatever. That's not a good idea. Um, there, it, I could have, I don't have to go with the market. Bertil's asking about how about inside days. I mean, I don't, I'm doing specific stocks. I'm not doing the market every day. And I don't need the market for my trade. So the market could be doing nothing one day and I could still do something. So it's neither here nor there about the market for me. I'm looking for specific stocks. Another watch I had today, which I didn't do actually, was Baidu. It would have worked. We ended up going long NVIDIA. My chat watches today were NVIDIA long and Baidu. And they both worked, but we only did the NVIDIA. So I don't need the market. An inside day means nothing to me. Unless I'm in a market trade already, unless I'm in a a call or a put for the QQQs, but then I would wait. Because again, if I'm in an option, I don't have to have a ticket that day. I'm not doing daily option expirations, which now they introduce this year. And you know what? That's been part of the sideways action in the market. If you have been an options trader prior to 2023, you know that they only used to have the, ex the, the Tuesday and the Thursday and the Friday expirations for the Qs and the SPY, they added daily expiration dates for options. I think that that has actually affected market action. If you trade the market, whether it's day trades or options, it's how the market is traded. That's flushing itself out going into the end of the year. I forget exactly when they started that, but I'm not doing those daily expirations. And if you're doing the daily expirations, even though you're paying less, you better get it right. Or you're screwed, actually. There is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money. Or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. And there's a lot of different sizes of even hedge funds. You have small hedge funds. You have big hedge funds. You have people doing different things all the time. But gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are just not good gaps and we don't trade them. And again, many days we're not trading the market. Some gaps are nothing gaps and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps, do not, or which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power money will flow to pay you. You cannot take every gap in the direction of the gap. And you can't take every gap for a gap fill, which a lot of people want to do too. That's wrong as well. Okay? So again, you have to narrow it down. Think about it intellectually. You need momentum. You can't always do that same thing all the time. You do have to use your brain to think it out. If it was that easy to always make money buying and support, no one would ever lose money in the market. Okay? And again, people get trapped when they think that and every pullback that works for the last two weeks or whatever, and people say, oh my God, it's so easy, it's so easy, this is so easy. Yeah, it's easy until it's not, okay? You have to think things through. And really, momentum is the way to go. And again, like I said earlier, the fast trades. Momentum is a big move that comes into a stock in an ATF or stock. You can make money trading momentum if you get in before the momentum occurs. After the fact, it's too late. It's too late. Many people can't figure out how to get in early enough and either change the momentum and then end up scalping or take the opposite direction of the move in the hopes of catching some profit. Momentum to the upside happens when people are going long and momentum to the downside happens when people are selling, okay? So we did capture this move to the downside here that happened on the 7th, okay? So this was the QQQs. We captured this, boom, okay? We shorted this, we did a put in it, boom. That's a big fat red bar where you would sell into the market. And we did that. That was last week, I guess. But anyways, how do I figure it out? I rate it. I use a 26 point rating system that pinpoints the direction of the power money by reading the price. And ultimately, 
it's it's just one of these types of things where if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not sure, if it's a 50-50 crapshoot for you when you're taking a train, then the bottom line is that you don't have any conviction in it. So why are you putting why are you putting risk on? Again, you're going back to the gambling mentality. You can't be in that gambling mentality because you're setting yourself up to lose. There's too many people that are trading. There's too many people that want to win. There's too many people that are serious about trading that will take your money like that, okay? So be smart. Think it through. Train small size initially and think it through. Like I said, it's okay if you don't do a trade every single day. If you're not sure if the market's going to head higher, if you're not sure the market's going to drop and head lower, you don't have to do anything right now, okay? What kind of indicators do you use for your trades? Robots or draw on your charts? I don't, I don't, I used to print my charts out and draw on them. I don't do that anymore. I just use my brain now. So I don't have a robot and I don't draw on my charts anymore, but I could print them out and draw on them. And I do encourage people that are new when I'm teaching them to print their trades out, I mean to print charts out and draw on them if that helps you, okay? I don't, I don't do that anymore, but I used to do that. And I think that drawing on charts and taking notes in a notebook and using a pen and paper actually is important because a lot of people, again, we're doing this electronically. You're pressing the button. It's too much like you're playing a, com you know, a computer game or a video game sometimes when you're pressing buttons. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I'm in this thing or I have too much size on or I shouldn't have taken this one or I should have gotten out. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking notes, writing stuff down, printing stuff out, drawing on charts. I encourage that. I encourage that a lot. But anyways, if you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with a crowd of day traders, which absolutely right now, most day traders are long. I'm not, okay? We did go long specific things. Like I said, we like Bido, I didn't go long, and we did go long NVIDIA. So I'm really, really, again, picking and picking and picky, picky, picky the ones that we want to do. Just like I'm being picky poo about the shorts, I'm being picky poo about the longs. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? It's not earnings season right now. Not until after we get back from July 4th does earnings start in the month of July. So again, June, you have to be careful. But we've, we've been hitting it every day. But you gotta have an edge, whatever your edge is. My edge is shorting. My edge is fast trades, okay? Getting in and getting out quickly, trading on the one minute chart. And again, trading gaps, which is the only strategy that I trade. So opportunity luckily sets up daily. I mean, for the most part, there's some days we don't have any trades, but for the most part, we're able to find something every day. That's all I need. That's all you need. All you need is one trade a day to make money. So for me, I spent a lot of time in the morning trying to figure out what to do in the work and the pre-work. In that pre-work, I'm focusing, 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 doing the rating, looking at the charts, analyzing it. Again, if you want to print your charts out and write on them, do that all in the morning. Get up early, spend an hour, spend two hours. The more time that you spend getting ready to do it, guess what? The more money you're going to make when you actually do take the trade. And again, it's about hitting that bullseye. Now, here was another one that we did. This was before Memorial Day, actually. We shorted this buy. Again, I'll do puts in this buy. I'll short this buy on margin. You can do a large size. You can do a small size, whatever. We shorted this 411.80 and got out at 410.65. Risk was 3,034.50, 5.24. This was this day here. So what happened here in the market? The market gapped down. Spy closed here, gap down, boom. We shorted as a day trade, fell. And again, you can do a put. You can do a put, you can do a day trade. And again, sometimes I'm doing both. Sometimes I'm doing both. So it's, it's just one of these times where it, the focus really, really counts. Oh, actually here it is blown up. So closed here, gap down, fell, boom. Again, get in, get out. Here was the one minute. Closed here, gap down. We shorted it, got the drop. And again, I'm not holding all day. You know, when these things came all the way down to 410, I think it broke 410. I'm, I'm not holding all day. Now, I might hold an option a little bit longer. Here was the mu that we did. We talked about this earlier. This was last week. 65.50 was the entry, 64.48, again, get in, get out. A dollar plus, done. Again, a dollar is a good move in a stock like move. You could have held this longer. This came all the way down. Again, this went to 64. We got in the mu, we got out of the mu, but here's where it went. You could have held it a little bit longer, but it was a nice trade, nice short. Again, the momentum was to the downside on mu, okay? This was a short this gap down. 
You take the trade, get in, get out. Okay? And then you're done. And you're done in the morning. You're done quick. Here was the day of the Mew. Actually, this was 6-8. I forget the reason for the Mew. I don't even remember now. I don't, I don't remember the reason for the gap. Closed here, gap down, fell. Boom. And here it was in the one. So anyways, I'm calling the trades live in the room for the day trades. The newsletters come emailed to you directly in live time. Most of the trades are sent in the morning. Some are sent later in the day. May 3rd, I sent this UP out, S out at 309. It was the 175 strike that expired on the 12th. We're doing the weeklies. Again, really cheap. Could have done one contract paying $250. And you're getting get out. Again, four contracts, you risk a thousand, could have made six eighty. This is a good solid trade. Again, you buy the put, you sell the put. You get the momentum, you sell it. Wednesday, May 3rd. Let's take a look at that. May 3rd was here. Close here, gap down, boom. Get up the next morning, boom, out, done. Call it a day. Again, anything you do, it doesn't matter if it's a day trade or an option. You get out after you get the momentum. You take the train, get the momentum, out, boom. Okay? And again, red bars to pick selling, green bars to pick buying. I plopped in here the results so far this year. We've had a, we've had a great start to the year. We're on pace for the year. We're on target. I don't have in here the NVIDIA trade today. We had a nice trade in that, though. This is up through yesterday, 306.147. Here was the target from yesterday. And then, then we did target on Friday, too. Then the MU. We also did LVS last week on the 8th. We were, we're having a good start to the year. We're on pace for this year despite the craziness of this year. And this was last uh, year's results, 2022, 651 and change for the whole year. This is These are margin trades. These are trades on margin with an average risk of $2,800 per year. But if you want to trade for a living, you can do it. It's about the consistency. It's about having a winning strategy. It's about having a good mentor, especially in this market, someone to follow. I'm calling the day trades live in the room. Where to get in, where to put the stop, where to get out, where the targets are. All of this counts. And it's important to have someone to follow, I think, in this market. But really, for me, it's the fast trades. Do I put trades on in the pre-market? No, I do not trade the pre-market. What if it doesn't set up? I can rate a gap in the morning at 6 a.m. and it can open at 9.30 and not even set up at all, then I don't do it. And you can't trade options in the pre-market at all. So I wait till the open to see if it sets up to do the option and the day trade after the open, only trading on the live day. It's not the same thing. You do not have four to one margin in the pre-market. Even if you did margin trades, you'd have Cat, you take it a cash flow position or you'd have it on two to one margin and it may not set up again i teach the setups in the class too any other questions but time of the day is critical like i said at the beginning one of the benefits of training is you can work from home you have an unlimited income but it's the freedom it's the freedom it's the quality of life that counts okay now i'm doing an options lecture today for my students at four o'clock I'm done here in a few minutes. I'm probably going to take a walk in the park. It's a beautiful day. I mean, it's just like, I, it's like, a, it's Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to go for a walk in Central Park at noon. I mean, you know, you just can't, I mean, I made money three hours ago. It's just, it's just like, you know, the, the time investment and the cost and, and, and all the energy put into doing this, it will pay off if you find something good that's a good strategy. It will pay off if you stick with it. It will pay off. Again, it's the short-term um, commitment for the long-term gains. It's just that many people are so short-sighted. And I think that people are just attempting to trade for so many years, so many years, took so many classes, are losing money in the market. They have such a negative attitude and they feel like, oh my God, I'm never going to make it. It's never going to work. I can't do it. It wreaks havoc then on their confidence level. Their confidence takes a hit. And when your confidence takes a hit, it's hard for you to go after anything in the market. It's hard for you to risk money. It's hard for you to take a chance on paying for a class like mine, you know? So it's, you have to rectify that within yourself. Is this something you really want to do? Be honest with yourself. And what are the real issues you're having? Do you not, do you lack self-confidence or do you not have a good strategy or what's going on with you? Like if you're not successful, why? You know, get down to the nuts and bolts of it. Mark sitting on the fence. Sitting on the fence is okay for a little while while you're thinking it through. You don't want to sit on the fence forever. Okay, that's, 
that's problematic because then you're never going to get anywhere. And then time just goes by. Again, I cannot believe it's June. I moved in November. I moved in November. I did a webinar with John earlier in the year when I just was still unpacking. I'm unpacked, but I'm not situated. So I finally have all the boxes out of my apartment. I moved in November, but my office where I'm working right now, everything isn't totally situated the way I want it in this room. And I cannot believe it. It's, it's June, you know, half the year is over. I mean, it's time flies. Again, before you know it, it's gonna be the holidays, which I'm very excited about. So I've been enjoying Central Park. I got to see spring. I got to see summer. November, we didn't really have a winter here in New York. We had like no snow. I'm looking forward to seeing the park in the fall. Someone asked me what's my favorite season in the park. I don't know, because I really got here too late before the leaves had already fallen by the time I moved in November. And then we had like no snow, but I really am loving the summer. I'm absolutely, absolutely loving the summer in the park. And the weather's been beautiful here. Despite the wildfires, we've had some extremely nice 70, 80 degree days with, with, with a breeze blowing. It's been fabulous. But as far as Mark goes, he's sitting on the fence. Put, it, put a date on it. It's like put a date on it. You know, say, I'm going to make a decision I'm doing about this by June 15th, July 1st, whatever. You know, 2023. Set a, Put a date on it. Because if you're just endlessly thinking about trading or thinking about doing something, you, you never get to it. You just never get to it. You never manifest that goal. You never take the necessary steps to do it. But it is about having 100% conviction and it is about empowering yourself to trade. So I teach people my strategy once a month in a class. And again, I work from home. I work from home and I love my new office. I love my new office. I'm very happy here. Again, it's not totally situated, but I was just sitting here the other day thinking, wow, I'm like, this is, I'm so happy that I actually have this big room I can work in. I, I paid for a third TV to have the cable here in my room so I can listen to CNBC in the morning. You know, it's, Make your office a place that you want to be and you want to trade and a happy place so you can get, stay focused. Again, get a couple of notebooks, take notes, get up early in the morning. I'm an early morning person. You know, you don't want to be rushed to take a trade either. You know, if you're not ready, if you oversleep, if you're feeling sick, then just take the day off. But anyways, my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And it teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. It teaches to read support and resistance, to take positions in the right direction, and it teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. It teaches how to get conviction with your trading and the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can use it for day trades. You can use it for options. I do both. The class for June is June 24th and 25th, which is in two weeks. Class tuition is $69.99. The class is online. I'm doing a turtle sale uh, for this week going on through Friday. I took this picture. This is a great picture. This is a pond in the park. I took it. You can see the, the, the skyscrapers through the, through the pond and these little turtles. I'm telling you, it is done to, to go into the park for me and relax every day has been just amazing for me. But the turtle sale is you save $1,000 off the class. So instead of paying $69.99, you pay $59.99. It's going on through Friday. I'm also offering the trading room and the newsletter free with the class and this turtle special through the end of 2023, which is a nice bonus and a nice sale. And, and Kate's sending everybody to the offer there. And again, we had great results for May. We're on target for June. Just getting back to what Mark was saying, he's saying he's sitting on the fence. Again, there's a difference between taking risks for risk's sake, okay, and then just taking a trade and not letting it, uh, or taking any trades at all and not having any conviction in it and doing something where you're, where you're unsure of yourself. So again, I was saying that I live along the park. There's a lot of birds in the park. There's actually hawks. There's red-tailed hawks in Central Park. So I live in a building and I went up on the roof. This was a couple weeks ago. Actually, it was the end of May. And the, the, the view on the roof, I remember when I was looking at this building, I remember it was amazing. So I was here for a couple of months before I went up on the roof. I went up on the roof by myself and I saw a red-tailed hawk on the roof. 
It was an unbelievable sight. First of all, he was huge. And any of you here, I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel, The Stock Swoosh on YouTube. I actually took a couple videos of the hawk. It's, it's, it's on my YouTube in the shorts. Anyways, ever since then, I've taken everyone that's kind of visit me, friends have kind of visit, we've gone up on the roof and seen the hawk. So the hawk hunts. I think he lives on the roof. I mean, I haven't seen the nest. I think he lives on the roof. And the hawk, when the hawks are hunting, so I see, I see them circling. You know, if you live in the Northeast, there's about 2 million uh, red-tailed hawks actually in the United States. So they hunt and they go in a circle, circle. When that hawk goes down to get a rat <laughs> in Central Park, he is not 50-50 about killing that rat for his dinner. He is going down and he is getting that rat and he is taking that rat up to the roof to eat that rat, okay? That's how you have to be with your trades. That's how you have to be when you go after something in the market. Think of the hawk, okay? And if you go and you see the picture of, the, of you see that video of the hawk, he's more than two feet, he's massive. And the most exciting thing about seeing him was how close, like I don't, like no human being would ever be as close as, as they could get as I saw that hawk that's on my roof. Like if I went up right now, he's up there. But when you have a, a a bird of prey like that that goes after their dinner okay they aren't there to mess around and that's how you have to look at trading okay so he's going after the rat he's gonna eat and that's how you have to be with your trading that's how you have to be with it that's serious because you can lose money when you're risking money in a trade and you don't want to lose your money you don't want to lose your dinner and you want to make money too Okay, so think of the hawk, all right? Going after something to win. Any other questions here before I'm done? But you, you, gotta, you gotta go see that video of the hawk. It's like unbelievable, actually. It's on my, on my YouTube. Any last minute questions here? Listen, thanks so much for having me. Email me at melissaatthestockswish.com if you have any more questions. Yeah, we have a lot of red ta red tail hawks here in California. I think we have a million of them or something. They're beautiful. Beautiful. And they're beautiful to watch, uh, and they help keep the rodent population.